Hey, hi, and howdy, sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel. I am back with three more amazing, healthy, and delicious dinners that your family will love. Two of these were brand new to us, and they were fabulous, and one of them is a family favorite that I wanted to share with you all because it's just delicious. If you like this kind of content, food and kitchen content, uh, what's for dinner style videos, grocery hauls, that sort of thing. I do this all the time on my channel. So if you're new, I hope you will consider hitting the subscribe button. All right, let's dive into spring roll bowls. These are a family favorite. They are easy to make and they are so delicious and they're perfect for this time of year. And I say that I live in Texas. So this time of year for us, it's already getting pretty hot. Uh, these are really refreshing and delicious and feel free to just kind of edit any of the ingredients. You can substitute different meats or different veggies, whatever suits your fancy. I'm gonna link the original recipe down below for this dressing so you can make it uh, at home with the exact ingredients. I had to switch a couple of things up because I didn't uh, have everything. All right, we're gonna start off by making the dressing for this, which is like the most work for the entire dish. So I've got some oil, some garlic. I use my homemade confit garlic. Um, I do have a video for that and it is always linked down below. It's my favorite condiment for the kitchen because it gives me this sweet, delicious roasted garlic plus garlic oil. Uh, but if you don't have that on hand or you haven't gotten around to making any yet, feel free to use fresh garlic or even garlic powder. We're gonna throw in some ginger and some soy sauce. This is gonna have so much flavor and it's deep and it's rich. And of course, a little bit of honey is added in there and then some sesame oil. I use roasted sesame oil and I've gotta say, if you can find it at your store, go for it because it is just amazing. I will never go back to buying plain sesame oil after trying it. And then finally, I added in a little bit of uh, rice vinegar. If you have some mirin, I think that would be a fantastic addition in this as well. I thought I had some, but I didn't see it in my pantry, so maybe I'm a little bit off. I did go ahead and um, add a little bit of salt in here as well. And now that my garlic is kind of mashed up, I went ahead and took the fork out and we're gonna grab a spoon to get this all mixed up and bring it all together. And this is our dressing for the bowls. Now, once you've mixed it, make sure you taste it because some people might like a little bit more salt or maybe a little bit more umami flavor or maybe a little bit more sweetness. Maybe you wanna add some heat. Um, I like that chili garlic crunch. I use that whenever recipes call for like sriracha and stuff like that. It's one of my favorites. I think it tastes fabulous. So if you wanna add something like that in here, it would be amazing. All right, so now we're gonna cook our rice noodles. Now I'm using these because I had them on hand in my pantry. You don't have to use these. I mean, these would be the closest thing to what a spring roll is made of. It's made of like a rice paper. These are rice noodles, but feel free to substitute rice or ramen noodles or anything like that. And then I've got this uh, shaky stuff that I put on there that's got some seaweed in it and some sesame seeds and some black sesame seeds. I've got uh, an array of veggies, carrots, bell peppers, cabbage, and cucumbers. I've got some spring onions that I cut up, some wasabi. And then of course I've got this nori here because my son really likes it. So I cut some of that up into his bowl, which is more like an egg roll or not an egg roll, more like sushi than um, a spring roll. But you know, feel free to add in what you want. Really go nuts with it. So first we're gonna cook our rice noodles, which is like the easiest thing in the world to do. I put them in this big bowl and then I boiled some water in my kettle and I'm just gonna pour it over the top and let them sit there for about three minutes. You don't have to do anything at all. They just soak up that hot water, you drain it out and you've got noodles. It's that simple. Now these will get really starchy and stick together. So I am gonna go ahead and add in some of my garlic oil just cause it has extra flavor. And I wanna kind of keep these from getting stuck next to each other. Uh, feel free to add in some sesame oil or olive oil, whatever you have on hand. I did throw a little bit of uh, sesame oil in here as well in the end, but I just wanna keep them from turning into one big, a ball of rice noodles. So I just stirred that in. Now I've got some shrimp here. I just sauteed these in a skillet because it's easy. You could boil them or you could use any kind of meat you want or just go vegetarian. That's totally up to you. But oftentimes at the store when I see spring rolls, they do have shrimp in them, so I went with that. I put some of my noodles in the middle of the bowl. Again, rice noodles mimic the rice paper that a spring roll is wrapped in. I put those shrimp in there and then I'm just gonna kind of pile on the veggies that I want here. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of everything in there, of course, some cabbage, some cucumber, some carrots, some bell pepper. But if you have other veggies in your fridge, feel free to add those as well. I think I even minced up a little bit of cilantro in here too. Uh, cilantro is so great. It's got this really fresh pop of flavor in here. Now I know not everybody likes it. So if you don't skip it, that's fine. Mint is also really good in here. Um, and then I used the spring onions, which are like green onions, but you could use any kind of onion you want. And I put some of that shaky stuff on there that's got um, the different sesame seeds and the nori in it and stuff. And I'm gonna top it with this dressing. 
Oh, this is so good. So delicious. It really does taste like a spring roll, but it's not wrapped up. You know, you're just eating it with a fork, but it is absolutely delightful. And I hope you will try this recipe. All right, before we move on to the next recipe, I want to share this with you. Inkbird contacted me and sent me this amazing juicer. And I wanted to share it with all of y'all because I actually really love it. I have been cooking healthier. I'm sure if you are a long time viewer, you've noticed that the theme of my videos in 2024 has been a lot more healthy meals. And we are trying to kind of move in a healthier eating direction um we still love our junk food but it is definitely time to kind of start thinking about eating a little bit better and paying attention to what's in our food so i've actually been shopping around for a juicer when they contacted me this was perfect so they sent this to me and i love it so i'm just going to share with y'all one of my favorite things to make i usually do this in a food processor but it's even better in a juicer so i started off with some cucumber and you can see this juicer just has no problem separating the pulp from the juice and it all collects there in the middle um so it just pushes the pulp out the front end you can see i've got a cup there catching it and then the juice stays in the center and here in a second you'll see me just reach underneath there and i'll kind of open a little valve and it will pour all of the cucumber juice into a cup for me it's very easy to assemble very easy to use um it really is a very great machine for somebody who doesn't know a lot about juicers but wants to kind of get into that juicing game because it is pretty popular so now that i have juiced my cucumbers i'm going to go ahead and move on to adding my next ingredient i've got a couple of mint leaves now mint can be strong that's why i've only got two um, if i was making a huge batch of this for everybody it would be different but i'm making this just for myself so i only put two small mint leaves in there and then i am piling in the watermelon now again i'm down in texas and it's already in the 80s we hit 90 the other day so i'm looking for bright refreshing things to drink because we're outside a lot with our homeschool co-op and stuff and I'm looking for something just kind of cool off and relax and watermelon and cucumber and mint are very bright and very refreshing and of course this has absolutely no trouble pulverizing that watermelon and separating the pulp there's so much liquid I went ahead and opened the valve and drained a little bit of that watermelon juice out of there I did not keep my pulp for this, but do keep in mind you always could. I've seen people dehydrate it and put it in freeze dryers and things like that. I didn't do that today. Maybe I will in the future. I was just super excited to make this particular drink. I've made it in the past, um, like I said, in my food processor. And I've also made it in one of those things where you put like the watermelon and cucumber and mint down the middle and it just kind of flavors the water. But this was even better. So now that I've got that juice, you can see I mean, it's just packed just full of all the nutrients and deliciousness of those cucumbers and watermelon and mint, but we're gonna make it fun and make it refreshing and add in a little bit of cherry Sprite. This is delightful. It's a great treat in the afternoon. You can pour it over ice and it's nice and cold and it will really get you through a hot afternoon. Anyway, thank you so much Inkbird for sharing this with me and I've got a 15% off discount code linked down below in the description box so you can order a juicer for yourself. All right, on to the next meal. Let's do some Cuban chicken bowls. I like cuban food um <laughs> i don't get the opportunity to eat it very often there's not a cuban recipe or restaurant around me that i can find um hopefully one will come soon because i've noticed there have been a lot more cuban people migrating to my area so i'm really hoping that they will open a restaurant but i've been trying different cuban recipes over the last year or two here and there and man i really like the food which is not surprising because i kind of like things that have more of that latin flair and things like that so these cuban chicken bowls are right on my alley we're gonna make this mango pico de gallo or mango salsa whatever you want to call Call it. I've got some mango, some poblano peppers. Feel free to use jalapenos, but if you've got people that don't like spicy food, poblanos are a great way to go. Some cilantro and some green onion. That's all it took. I threw a little lime juice in there and a little bit of salt because it helps to pull the juice out of all the different veggies and help them kind of blend their flavors together. I'm gonna give this a good stir and set it off to the side and let everybody get happy together in the bowl. Now over to the stove top, we're gonna make some cilantro lime rice. Turns out this is my husband's favorite rice. I'm gonna use it for two different dishes this week, for this one and the next one. So I've got two cups of rice and I just kind of saute it over um, a medium high heat with a little bit of olive oil for a couple of minutes until the rice starts to kind of toast. You can see it change color and you can even see that it doesn't slide around the pan the same. It kind of um, sticks together as if it's fried together in a ball. That's that's when I know it's done. I took some of my home canned chicken broth and some water and added it to the rice, put the lid on and let it simmer for 20 minutes. And when it was done, it looked like that. So I tossed in about a tablespoon and a half of butter. And to that, we're gonna add the juice of a lemon and the juice of a lime, or if you like me, you have the stuff in the bottle in the fridge, which I think is great. It's just fantastic to always have on hand. But I just did a squeezer of each of those in there. And then I threw in some cilantro and I gave it a stir, put the lid back on and set it off to the side. That way 
way the cilantro releases all of its flavor as it's getting heated with the steam from the rice. And of course the lemon and lime juice kind of soak up into everything. And this rice is absolutely fabulous. It's not overly acidic. It's not overly strong with the cilantro, but it has a really amazing flavor. All right, now for the chicken, uh, I'm going to just season this and throw it in a skillet and then season the other side. I've got chicken thighs because that's really what I like to cook with. I think they stand up to high heat of a skillet really, really well. They don't dry out. They're great in the air fryer. I just find them to be a lot more versatile and agreeable than chicken breast. Plus, they're usually cheaper. But if you want to do chicken breast, go for it. I mean, really, you could kind of do different meats in here. But the original recipe was for chicken bowls. So that's what I'm rolling with. I'm going to season this chicken with salt and pepper, a little bit of cumin. I did some uh, chili powder and I use smoked paprika, but the recipe just called for regular paprika. And of course some garlic and onion powder. And over in my skillet, I've got a little bit of oil and a little bit of butter. And I'm just gonna toss that chicken in there and let it develop a little bit of color on both sides. Now I've got about a tablespoon of oil and about half a tablespoon of butter in there. I like the flavor that butter gives chicken and it helps it brown more, but I am trying to kind of cut back on some of that fat. So I was careful not to add a ton of the butter into the skillet. Now that I've got it seasoned side down in the pan, I'll go ahead and season the other side just the same. Again, I'll be linking the original recipe down below so you can check that out and see if I made any changes or if you wanna follow the original recipe. Typically, I'll alter a couple of things just depending on what I have on hand or in the case of the recipe after this one to cut some calories because we are trying to eat a little bit healthier. Now this guy's just gonna cook in the skillet for a little while. I like it to develop some deep, rich color and a little bit of crispiness. And so I'm just gonna leave it in the skillet and not touch it for probably about four minutes per side. Maybe not quite that long, depending on how fast it looks like it's cooking. Some of my chicken thighs are thicker than others. It really just depends. Uh, so I just kind of keep an eye on it, but I just want the chicken to fully cook and develop color and caramelization on both sides, just like that. Once it's done, we'll remove it from the skillet and I let mine rest for about 15 minutes, but then I did come through and I cut it up into these little serving size bite pieces there so that we can assemble our bowls here in just a minute. You don't have to do this. You could serve a whole chicken thigh in there. I just find this is more convenient. Plus it keeps in the fridge so I can make leftovers for lunches very, very easily. Now that the chicken is cut, I'm just gonna squeeze the juice of an orange over the top and I really like that. You know, I eat a lot of Mexican food, especially cause I'm down here in Texas. We always do lemon or lime. I forget about orange, but it is absolutely Absolutely amazing mixed in with these flavors and there's the bowls I have the rice and black beans that salsa that we made and of course the chicken and these were amazing that mango salsa mixed with the spiciness of the chicken because there's so much flavor in it was perfect all right, the last meal is gonna be these dragon chicken stir fry bowls that I made. So I'm gonna link the original recipe for the dragon chicken and I did alter it a little bit. I cubed up my chicken thighs that I'm showing you there. I also have some broccoli, some onions, and some bell pepper that I diced up. It's just what was left in my fridge. You can use whatever veggies you have. Those are all ready to go and I'm gonna start on the dragon sauce. So I've got some soy sauce. I'm linking the original recipe. Know that I am doing the recipe one and a half times. I always find if I just follow the recipe, there's never enough sauce. So I did one full recipe worth and half of a recipe worth. So if it called for one cup of something, I did one and a half cups. If it called for a teaspoon, I did one and a half teaspoons and so on. So I've got some soy sauce first of all, and then I added in my ketchup. Next, we're gonna add in some honey. I am really starting to run low on honey in this bottle. I do have some more on hand. I need to remember to keep this guy upside down so that I don't have to fight with it so much when I put it back in the pantry. Next, some oyster sauce. I've been out of this forever. I finally bought some at the store the other day and restocked all of my Asian inspired things because I do cook a lot of Asian inspired dishes. I mean, sometimes it's just some kind of quick stir fry with some ramen noodles at lunch, but either way, I use all these things. They're great to have on hand. They're really versatile and they have a ton of flavor. Next, I threw in some rice vinegar. Again, if you've got some mirin, it would be great in here too. And I still couldn't find mine. Maybe I really am out. I feel like I have some though. I'm gonna have to keep looking. A little bit of sesame oil, and then that's that chili garlic crunch I was referencing in the first recipe. I love it, it is so delicious. Of course, if you don't have it or don't like it, you can use like sriracha or something like that, or just leave it out if you don't want any spice in there. Next, let's go check on our chicken. It's all cubed up. I'm using chicken thighs because they do, again, stand up to high heat a lot better, but you can use whatever cut you want, or you could even do this with like shrimp if you wanted to. I think that'd be delicious as well. So I threw a little salt and some pepper in there. I've got some paprika. I went with with plain paprika this time, not smoked, just plain. A little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of onion powder. Uh, the recipe called for some ginger. I've got powdered, but I bet if you have some fresh, that'd probably be delicious as well. And of course, some chili powder in here. 
this chicken was really, really good. Now, original recipe does call for battering and kind of frying the chicken, which I'm not gonna do because we don't want all that extra fat in there. So what I've done is just season the chicken and I've added a little bit of cornstarch on the outside because it does help to kind of create a little bit of crispiness and texture. We're not gonna fry this. I have some oil in my skillet just to keep everything from sticking and to cook in, but we are not frying it. We're not deep frying it or anything like that. I just mixed everything around. And over in the skillet, I've got about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil, and I've got about half of a tablespoon or so, maybe a little more of sesame oil. I threw the chicken in there, and now I'm just stirring it around to kind of break it apart. You know, it's cut up into pieces, but it does kind of glob together when you throw the cornstarch in there. Just stir it around in the oil and it'll break apart into the nice little bite-sized pieces that we created. And then I'm just going to leave it alone in the skillet and let it cook for a couple of minutes per side. And it does develop a lot of texture and it works out really beautifully. So if you're looking to save calories and not fry food, this is a great alternative because you still get that good mouthfeel without all the breading and the deep fat frying and things like that. So now the chicken has cooked for a little while. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. You can see it's browned up and it definitely has some texture. It's perfect. It's exactly what I was looking for. You just want to make sure that everybody gets to cook on both sides because that is what develops the texture and stuff. And you want to make sure that the chicken is fully cooked before we pull it out of the skillet. We want to make sure that we don't have any raw chicken left for sure. Once that's done, pull it out of the skillet, set it off to the side. Uh, you can see it's all in the little bite-sized pieces. It's got color all around. It's just perfect. And I'll take it out of the skillet and then I'm just going to kind of wipe the skillet out really quickly because I'm going to cook my stir fry in here. If you have a wok, that would be even better. Um, I didn't think to pull mine out, so we're just doing it in a skillet. I did top my chicken with a little bit of that sauce and just toss it around for a minute or so. It was amazing. This is so, so good. I don't know if you're like me, but I do get like a real good craving for some like Panda Express style Chinese food sometimes. And this is what I like. I like the meats and the sauces with the noodles and stuff like that. So this really hit the spot for that craving. Once I set that off to the side, again, like I said, I wiped out my pan, added a little bit more oil and sesame oil in there, and I just threw my broccoli, bell peppers, and onions in there. And I'm gonna let these just kind of cook for a couple of minutes. I don't wanna cook them all the way through. I want them to retain like some crunch and some texture and stuff, but I do want to give them a chance to cook and definitely develop a little bit of color. I like it when my broccoli starts to just get a little brown on it. Um, I just think it tastes really great that way. My family likes it that way. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it alone and let it sit for a few minutes on each side. And then once it's reached my desired doneness, like I said, I like a little more crunch in it. I will top it with some of this sauce and I'll stir it all around. And I will reserve some sauce so I can top everybody's bowls if they want a little extra. I like to have it that way because I think my son always wants a little bit extra sauce on his. But I just give this a stir and it is completely done. And again, I'm using the leftover cilantro lime rice. It tasted amazing with this. Um, the cilantro is not really strong, not that it matters because I think it kind of pairs with these flavors anyway, but this was so good and so quick and easy. Lots of veggies, we're using chicken, we didn't fry it and it was fabulous. Again, all the recipes are linked or listed down below so you can enjoy them at home. Thank you for joining me and I hope you will be here for my grocery haul on Tuesday. I will see you guys there. Have a great weekend, bye.